Hi everyone, this is your playback singer Bhargavi Pilandri. Ki namaskaram and welcome back to my channel. So as all of you know, it's the Pride Month going on and I am right now sitting in front of these three gorgeous people and it gives me immense honor pleasure and pride to introduce all three of them so let me get started so i have the drag queen herself patruni shastri you're looking fab thank you so much <laughs> so what is the whole idea about this look so um, i want to have purple because purple is a uh, the the color of the year in mm. one way and also purple reflects uh, a lot of uh, you know it it it's a part of the bisexual flag i'm a bisexual person yeah. it's also a part of non binary flag which is also you know i'm a non binary person so it represents me i wanted to kind of look a little bit brighter in a sunday morning you are totally <laughs> 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 so hence uh, you know bought purple with me okay lovely you're looking outstanding thank you and then we have shah aniket a lot of you would have seen i have collaborated with him for so many shoots so we going to talk and a lot of gossip and then we have shravan telu the uh, the very first belly dancer from our own city uh, mana hyderabad So tell me, Shravan, how did belly dancing happen? Okay, so uh, it happened way long back. So when I was studying uh, undergraduation, I just came across a, a TV reality show, and uh, there was a famous dancer dancing, and uh, it just it happened like a love at first sight. So mm -hmm. so I started researching about the art form, and I fell in love with the art form. So from there, from then and there, there is no looking looking back. back. <laughs> beautiful beautiful so we got to talk a lot more so shastri first tell me since it's the pride month happening so you know educate me and my viewers a lot more about the pride month and your lgbt community definitely so uh, pride as a is a kind of a celebration uh, so the first pride which was there uh, is actually something which led to a lot of uh, you know inclusion towards uh, you know gay lesbian bisexual and transgender people and uh, it was a riot so stonewall riot from there uh, every month uh, in june is celebrated as a pride uh, you know within uh, every city so it started with the us in the first yeah. and then this culture of uh, you know like uh, queerness kind of came into every other uh, state as well as country yeah. so uh, today uh, the major role of pride is uh, you know to be given to the corporates because they are the ones who are pushing it or kind of uh, you know putting this notion of pride month within mm -hmm. their own uh, you know uh, uh, place so um, what is lgbt let me just kind of lit quickly take uh, you you through about that so lgbt is lesbian gay bisexual and trans people uh, there is also a plus which says that you know all the other kind of sexuality and gender uh, which is like we have pansexual we have asexual we have uh, omnisexual polysexual like all that kind of sexual so people can't remember these names so the best part is like put a plus and say that everybody is included so oh, okay. um, that is what uh, the entire uh, place of pride kind of comes with so it's a celebration of existence it's a celebration of uh, the fight and the struggle which the trans as well as the gay community have taken place and uh, it's it's the time for us uh, you know where we get a lot of gigs uh, you know because we are queer <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also um, you see a lot of drag queens as well kind of you know coming out of mm. their graves on pride month because uh, the rest of the year we don't have work okay. so but so what <laughs> basically goes behind like these drag shows like you know uh, the whole idea what is the whole idea behind it so drag is a form of an art mm. and um, you know people assume that drag is something which is from the west but mm. i beg to differ i think that uh, the first representation of first written uh, thing of concept of drag was in india in natya shastra in 2000 bc and after that the britishers came they stole our concept without giving us due credits yeah. went back to <laughs> went back to uk and okay. uh, they put up in their shakespearean theater and from yeah. there the entire shenanigans of drag started okay. like uh, trans women were dressing up and yeah. going to pubs uh, when there was a cross dressing law when, uh, when there was a prohibition era yeah. and kind of uh, you know presenting themselves as a woman yeah. in solidarity of a trans woman or in solidarity of trans people uh, gay cis uh, you know people started dressing up and presenting or performing with the trans community okay. so uh, it's it's an art form which has a solidarity it ha it's an art form which which kinds of unboxes the gender uh, boxes like you know uh, women should wear a certain thing men should yeah, wear a certain thing yeah. but drag is like i will wear every damn thing and yeah. uh, i will call myself as a you know human being okay. so it's a form of art and um, 
when it came to India again, like the neo drag uh, performers, like who started uh, watching uh, the the Western ideas and kind of bringing it back. In 2017, the drag uh, you know erupted out of a sudden from all major cities like Bangalore, and uh, it, it was uh, it was not a very later time when we saw it in Hyderabad because Hyderabad had every damn thing. We had uh, you know belly dancer Shravan kind of came, <laughs> and then uh, you know we had events which were happening. We have queer musicians, we have queer performers, but there was no drag artist. Okay. So that's the time when we realized, okay, it's, it's really important to bring the drag culture as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just 2019, um, June 9th is when uh, we did our very first drag show. And we expected 21 people. And uh, we got around 500 people. And wow. that was the time. <laughs> what a big turnout. <laughs> that's the time when we realized, okay, this is something which we need to lead forward. And this is yeah. something which we need to kind of bring in. Great, great. So, Shravan, tell me like about your childhood. Where were you born and... How was your childhood? Yeah, so I was born, brought up in Vijayawada. Okay. So, so entire, so if you, if you, just uh, wake me up in the midnight. Uh, so Vijayawada comes me <laughs> with, with, along with me. So okay. I, I kind of uh, take it, take a pride of uh, representing Vijayawada. Mm -hmm. But I've been uh, represented as male belly dancers of Hyderabad. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. I think since uh, I'm being performed in Hyderabad. So. To be honest, I've not seen a male belly dancer till date. Okay. You know, because even I've learned, uh, you know, different forms of mm. dancing. So, as instructors, you have males. Mm. But, you know, when you see them on stage, I've not seen a... And I feel it's a very sensual art form. Mm. And mm. Uh, even, uh, you know, they say as a dancer, you need to have like a fit body. And uh, But I feel any shape or size, you yeah, know... Yeah, so exactly. So, the belly dance breaks all the barriers, yeah, yeah. actually. So, for, uh, to be a part of belly dance community, you don't need a particular gender, particular age group or particular size yeah, of body. Yeah. So, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, uh, most of our students also come up and ask us, uh, can we learn belly dance as part of our, uh, uh, you know, uh, fitness uh, routine. Yeah. So, we, we suggest them not, it's not the same thing what you think or what you see in the movies. Yeah. So, it has a separate history and culture as like uh, as uh, Sastri was saying about the track. Good. So, it is also, uh, men are also part of uh, belly dance scene. Uh, I think it's very long way back from the Egypt. So, there were a lot of men, male belly dance artists are uh, there and a few different styles in belly dance. There are only men are allowed to perform and oh. women are not allowed to perform. Oh. But because since it, uh, after the, uh, after the modern era, a lot of women are um, uh, coming and they're celebrating the bodies yeah. and they're um, uh, women in. So, I think that's where it became like a more in more into women art form. Yeah. So, but it's a complete balanced art form, I can okay. say. So, I, I think that's where when I got to know the history and culture and that's where I was like, okay, I should do that. And yeah. also, when I started learning belly dance, uh, so a lot of people questioned me, why you chose belly dance yeah. so so i always uh, remember one there was a scooty ad uh, when when i was child uh, this karina kapoor uh, scooty pep class okay. ad so they were saying uh, why should uh, boys have all the fun so oh, i was like okay. okay why should girls have all the fun <laughs> so i wanted to do it i want to yeah. give it a try so i want to break the right, stereotypes yeah. Yeah. so that's why i'm i'm right now uh, doing good i think and so do you do like thing. regular shows yeah so we do have a dance company here in hyderabad and okay. also now uh, right now we are an international school because oh, nice. one of our branches in netherlands as well wow so, lovely so what's your uh, so it's called raxology r a q s o l o g y raxology rax okay. means dance in arabic hmm. so we always uh, teach uh, uh, middle eastern and north african dance movement so we don't name it as belly dance school so Achha. we always try to uh, put it in a mena art form oh lovely yeah. lovely so any kind of experiences you know when you were performing on stage so you know any kind of uh, yeah. experience that you would want to share with us there, there were good experiences and good and bad bad like, yeah. experience yeah. i'll start with the bad yeah. <laughs> So one day I was performing in my office, mm. so where I work. So uh, so after the performances, there is a DJ uh, mm. DJ night happening. Yeah. So I was dancing. I was quite alone because all my team members left. So mm. I was like dancing alone. So and there was a group of men. They came and they were touching me inappropriately, and they were like, "Shravan, can you dance like this?" Can oh you? My I was like, God. That was a such a horrible moment. Yeah. Apart from that, I also was uh, shooting for a uh, channel yeah. near the Charminar. 
so that was my first time i am wearing a costume and shooting in front of the charminar that to in a public space i saw that yeah 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 so yeah. what time did you shoot because it was an early in the morning yeah i could figure that out because I it's thought, such a busy street uh, yeah, i was thinking uh, early in the morning nobody will be yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. but there were a lot of people <laughs> there looking at me they are yeah. taking my videos yeah. they're like they were fascinated like exactly. what is happening and i'm like uh we have we, have, we had a plan for like two and a half hours ka shoot but mm. we just completed in one hour and we ran away from there <laughs> oh, yeah. i am like literally shit scared because i don't know what happens when mm. if, if, what if people mock me correct so that's the very bad experience from that time i'm like shit scared to dance in in public uh, spaces but but then when you got mocked in your very own space yeah. were they straight men yeah they were straight men my god and okay. they were they were my office colleagues I was surprised that uh, we are in a corporate zone and still there are people behaving like this. They were not drunk also. That was my next question. <laughs> were like, were they intoxicated? So no, they, they were not drunk and it's just a normal they, like, party. The next day when you like saw them, how was their reaction? I think uh, as of now, I've I've never seen their faces right till now. Oh, it okay. happened in uh, oh. 18 September. Wow. <laughs> till now, and I didn't. And you still see haven't like bumped into them. No. <laughs> wow, that shows like your office is huge and massive. <laughs> So that's the that's the horrible incidents and also I have a good memories uh, so when I moved to Hyderabad I don't have a particular space to perform or showcase my talent yeah. so when I uh, I I used to I work with an NGO called Mobera Foundation they created a platform then I met more Sastri so I took some kind of guidance with Sastri also some okay. kind of you know how to present myself on yeah. the stage so everything so in my office so there was an event yeah. uh, uh, for that uh, they're taking the auditions huh. so i was not selected so i gave my audition as a belly dancer they were not i was not selected after one year there was a huge global uh, wipro uh, event is happening the entire hr team throughout india hr team they contacted me they wanted me to perform okay. because uh, i've been uh, uh, you know i've been into a lot of uh, telugu media news yeah, channels yeah. so they some of they got my contact and they called me shravan we want to you to be part of our event okay. so then i was like that's a my that that's kind of one of my achievement i can say because uh, was it because of what you are that's why your company didn't uh, my god people yeah, are yeah, still yeah. so broad minded exactly. we're living in the 21st <laughs> century yeah, yeah so that's the very uh, good achievement i can say okay wow So now over to Aniket. <laughs> so a lot of you would know that he's got a brand called Flirt Fits and Flirt Diamonds. So tell me about your brands and how have you collaborated with the LG uh, BT community? Yes. Hello guys. Uh, so um, my brand basically Flirt Fits is into styling, designing and fashion curation. Yeah. And Flirt Diamonds is into purely into designer heritage jewelry and we are also into content contemporary jewelry as well. When it comes to brand inclusivity, I I would like to talk about you know when um, my brand started Flirt Fits. Uh, my first gig was with Shastri as a drag performer. Uh, we we, we <laughs> have done uh, we have done shoot. I have styled him for a drag uh, drag thing. We have we had two looks for what we have done. Uh, we had done initially we have done Patro Lekha and Chitrangada. Okay. That, that yeah, two. probably. I feel you had sent me the pictures. I will definitely pop up the pictures. Yes. <laughs> Smita was also there. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. What that Smita was, was there? It was a the Diwali look. Ah, okay. Patrolika and Chitrangada was inspired by Rabindranath Tagore's poetry. Oh, okay. What we have uh, done. Huh. It was a very uh, nicely done this thing. It was my first experience uh, doing a drag uh, drag styling. and it it was phenomenal as a brand uh, i would like to say that you know we are uh, very inclusive in nature yeah. we want everybody uh, to come to us whether it's uh, whether the straight community or whether the lgbt community we, we welcome everybody with open arms and we also had a pop up stall at an lgbtq event okay uh, that is 3 uh, 4 years back okay and again i'm having my lgbtq uh, uh, what do you call stall at mnc company tomorrow okay, okay. nice yeah. so uh sas <laughs> i want to know which which was like a turning point in your life where you know you sexually felt something different within yourself and you realized this big change so i think i was uh, you know like when i was growing up yeah. it was always uh, you know like uh, 
I couldn't figure out, okay, one sexual expression or, a, you know, like a physical expression was of a certain gender. Mm. So my gender is, uh, you know, like my best friend, if I could say, like, it was the one who was putting a lot of questions when I was growing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I still remember I was watching this Telugu, uh, Telugu dubbed uh, Tamil movie uh, mm. of... Uh, uh, Rajni Khan. Uh, Rajni Khan is definitely not my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> there was this wonderful lady called Ramya Krishna uh, yeah. who was there, she, you know, Neelambari, uh, and this, this is Padiyapan and Telugu Narasimha. Okay. In that, uh, you know, there's this, one, this, this wonderful scene where she's rejected by the hero hmm. and she screams out loud and dances. Okay. So when I saw, I was like three or four years of age at that point in time. I thought, like you know, if you are angry, you have to scream loud and dance, or else okay. people will not take you seriously. <laughs> okay. So uh, even there, the, yeah. the representation or the person whom I felt it was me yeah. was in Ramya Krishna, and uh, I grew up watching her. I grew up watching that, uh, you know, taking that idea of gender. Uh, when I, you know, I started learning classical dance at the very age of five. You know, mm. my father couldn't afford me to be Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, Telugu Orthodox family. Yeah. So they said, like, it's better you learn classical dance and become culturally oriented than that of any other form. Yeah, yeah. And uh, hence, uh, I, they put me into classical dance. So when I was learning classical dance, I was feeling both the ideas of masculinity mm. and femininity at once. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't define it. You know, people said, it's a, you know, you're a trans person. Uh, people said, uh, you are... Uh, you might be somebody who is gay or because you are attracted to one people but yeah. none of the labels were defining me incomplete hmm. uh, and in, I didn't know what exactly it's called uh -huh. you know there's no word for it yeah. so it took me 21 years uh, to kind of uh, understand and figure out what exactly I was and then I realized okay it's not just uh, you know your, your, you know your body is not just about sexuality it's about your gender how do you see yourself in the middle? Yeah. So the very first thing which I got to know was gender fluid. When I heard this word called gender fluid, I was like scratching my head. What? What is this? Yeah. You know, what is it called? And then I heard the word bisexual and yeah. then I heard the word pansexual. Yeah. So uh, how do Basically, I... There are so many words <laughs> like my... I sell, you know, I sometimes just get confused. Indeed. Yeah. So, um, so please educate me also on this. So gender yeah. fluid is a gender identity, yeah. which means how do you see yourself in a mirror? Yeah. Like... Uh, uh, for a day, if I'm seeing, you know, without drag, I see myself as a man. Yeah. With drag, I see myself as a woman. Yeah. A uh, cis woman or, or a woman who identify herself as a woman, when they should see on the on the on the mirror, uh, they would see as a woman. So that is her gender identity. Mm. Uh, for me, I see both. Yeah, so okay. I'm I'm gender fluid. My my gender kind of you know, it's it's not a fluid which you can drink and become the change the gender, <laughs> but it's definitely a fluid which can uh, where the, you can see your gender flowing from one place to the other. Okay. Uh, how it came out was really funny. It's like, uh, I, I told my friends, like, you know, oh, I'm gender fluid. We were hanging out and everything. They said, oh, you are part of the community. Let's go. Let's go for, yeah. you know, like uh, some events or something which was happening. And uh, 377 judgment was striked down uh, in 2018. And there was this, uh, you know, news channel which kind of came to me and asked, you know, if we want to interview because you are, you are some seen face yeah. within the queer community. Yeah. And uh, then they asked, like, the entire interview was done. And then they asked, what are you? Like, <laughs> and then I was like, what am I? This is like the whole <laughs> Ramayana <story. laughs> And then I was like, uh, you know, you are, okay, what am I? I'm gender fluid is what I said. Yeah. And uh, the, the newspaper article was like, you know, 21 years of age comes out as gender fluid. And then it went off my family, it went off, went off my friends and everybody were like, what is this gender fluid? Because yeah. nobody has heard about it. Yeah. Uh, my father kind of uh, got back to me and said, like, you know, what is this? I, I get this word, but I'm, I'm a Telugu person. Your mm. English thing can't work in, in my house. Yeah. So better tell me or explain me. Then I told, see, this is how I feel. Mm. I feel, uh, you know, sometimes I'm a man, sometimes I'm a woman. woman. And I told it to my father. And he said, like, I, I might not understand you completely, mm. but uh, I will ask you questions. Mm. Every time if I find I'm, I'm in a confused state, yeah. I will ask you questions. It's your thing to help me out. Okay. Because, uh, you know, my parental book doesn't have <laughs> So sweet. Things. But overall, your parents had been supportive. Definitely. Yeah. And um, once I came out as gender fluid, again, it took me around two to three uh, years to figure out what my sexuality is. Okay. Whom I'm attracted to. Yeah. And uh, this constant pattern of dating multiple genders yeah. is when I realized, okay, I'm a, I'm a pansexual person. I use okay. bisexual, pansexual interchangeably. Mm. Okay. Uh, bisexual is somebody who's attracted to, you know, more than two genders. Yeah. Uh, and pansexual is somebody who's attracted to everybody without a gender. Like, uh, you know, everybody irrespective of the gender. Okay. Like, they don't see gender at all. Ach, you just okay. get attracted to uh, humans. Like, okay. As humans. Yeah. So, um, those are the two labels which I kind of came out. Okay. And in, in between, I was already a drag performer. So, okay. um, this became a shield for me to come out easily. Okay. Like, you know, this became, uh, people, 
had more problem with my drag than that of my gender and sexual identity. Mm -hmm. And when I when I was doing drag, when I was battling that that channel yeah. out. Uh, it became easy for me to tell people. So drag them. helped you. Uh, it definitely helped to come out of your shell. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So what was your turning point, Shravan? At the age of uh, when I'm studying uh, under graduation, yeah. so I started uh, learning about this art form, right? Yeah. So, so one day we were watching. Me and my mom were watching uh, some National Geographic channel. Uh, there was a show about uh, i think um, uh, thailand lady boys hmm, yeah so They're very famous <laughs> yeah <laughs> so me and my mom watching together we are like confused uh, hmm. uh, by looking they are like they are looking like a woman they look very pretty exactly by the way, yeah. but uh, the back story is like they are boys yeah. hmm. so we were so confused yeah. and my mom was asking me why are you watching this show yeah. so again i came to my uh, college and i started researching about uh, entire uh, the square uh, spectrum yeah. so then i came across even i, I was so attracted to uh, i was attracted to humans i yeah. i i i couldn't i didn't label them because yeah. uh, so most of times i attracted men uh, sometimes i was uh, attracted to women as well so like a pansexual if i'm right kind of yeah okay. pan or bisexual so okay. but majority of uh, chances i attracted to men so okay. So there was a time uh, me and my mom uh, I educated her and uh, while I'm while in this process I also learned so many things. Yeah. So I realized myself. So uh, I got a job and I uh, then I moved to Hyderabad yeah. and I I uh, started working with Mobera Foundation and in the, in the month of Feb uh, there was a, a Hyderabad Pride March is going to happen, you know. So that was happening and day before so uh, the team who is organizing this event they uh, they told us uh, if nobody is comfortable uh, walking the march we will give you the masks okay so you can cover yourself okay, and okay. mask if you don't want to show uh, your yeah. face so okay. uh, i started questioning myself uh, this is what i am why should i cover myself yeah, yeah. why i immediately called my mom and my brother they i put them on the conference call and i explained see this is a march and a lot of lgbt community and people who are like me yeah. entire kind of my family is walking yeah. so i want to walk and they were suggesting to wear masks but i don't want to wear masks yeah. what uh, just suggest me so i asked my mom my mom clearly told so you are just being you are so i think you are not you don't need to uh, uh, stand behind the curtain so you yeah, don't yeah. need to wear a mask yeah, because yeah. you are representing yourself yeah. you're not representing anything else so that's where like okay so i got a good uh, uh, kind of support from home okay. uh, i think that's the big achievement yeah exactly so later after the pride march after two days i uh, wrote a big uh, kind of message or email and i sent it to all my friends who are like close to me and i came out and i received a tremendous good support from all my friends yes. but few of them they immediately blocked me <laughs> and they <laughs> leave me yeah wow. because they think uh, you know a uh, lot of uh, there is a, this stereotype if you walk with a gay person you will also become a gay yeah, person yeah exactly so that's kind of uh, it's like there. people have this very illogical thinking like if someone has aids you touch them and exactly. you will also get aids <laughs> yeah it happened in my office as yeah. well so a lot of times uh, i decorate my uh, desk with uh, pride yeah. Uh, pride yeah so uh, my next question was like how is it for you in huh. you know your so office atmosphere i i decorate entire my desk with a uh, colorful so wow, a lot nice. of people used to come and ask me Uh, why are why are you not putting indian flag or any other flags you're putting rainbow flag yeah. i i i kind of uh, knowledge i kind of give them uh, kind of session knowledge yeah, session yeah, yeah. and a few people question me because you are uh, most of the time you are uh, roaming with the community people because and that's why you are a you believe so you are thinking, thinking like your, they change yeah, yeah. they are Is, half of the half of my understand. week they don't understand like it's not that someone can just exactly. come and tell you like okay you know you're going to be this so you're going to be that it so is immediately I question them I, I think this is a wonderful counter attack which we can kind of the queer community gives us like yeah. you know half of our lives we are surrounded by street people yeah exactly. so why can't we be street yeah. <laughs> so I ask the same question yeah. to my peers they're like okay we we don't know stuff we don't have an answer for that <laughs> yeah. so that's how uh, and I'm pretty active in my office yeah. and wherever I go I uh, spread Uh, I kind of fart rainbows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so like unicorns. That's yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So I heard Chastri that you married as well. <laughs> so I want to know the story. How did you meet your wife? And so I think um, it was um, 2000 or 2020, I guess. Uh, okay. The, the oh, COVID. just recently. Yeah. yeah the COVID. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's second or the first year. I don't remember, but. Uh, 
I know, I know for sure that I was doing a lot of Instagram lives, like okay. extreme lot of Instagram lives. This person also bumped in a couple of days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I could see this, uh, this, this kind of a strange name, uh, you know, called as Raja Rajeshwari Devi, big name without a DP. Wow, her name is Raja Rajeshwari Raja Devi. My God, my sister's <laughs> name is also Raja Rajeshwari. Wow. And uh, when, when, it, uh, when it kind of popped up, right, like uh, 200 p pictures she's liking, some reel she's liking, commenting. Someone is like constantly uh, liking. Constantly. And, yeah, I so thought this might be a creep because that. Uh, that means get a lot of creeps okay. uninvitedly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought and I was like ignoring for a fact and then I went back to my uh, hometown which is Vishakapatnam and there uh, it was a family gathering and I was like you know working around uh, then she, she kind of comes and she says uh, you know um, I am such and such uh, we are family you know kind of extended family okay. relatives and uh, we are such and such and we kind of you know, spoke with people both of us were having you know playing with kids over there and then she's like uh, what do you do like you you said you are a classical dancer, you said you are a Bharatanatyam dancer and then you wear this wigs, you wear this makeup. What is it called? Why are you so vibrant? Like, yeah. uh, you know, where do you get your makeups? That's what she yeah. asked. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, un I, I was blown away because yeah. uh, she has done her entire research paper. Like if, you know, <laughs> or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, if somebody has to write a book, she can do it without even... <laughs> wow, okay. So she had done her homework, her homework pretty well. And when I first talked to her, the very first interaction, I realized that she has already known me without okay. even me making an yeah, effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we kind of changed, exchange. I said this is drag and then we exchanged numbers, we were talking. I was not out as a bisexual person oh, to her okay. at that point in time. But, but she didn't realize like looking at your, uh, you know, attire? I think she, and she might have, like you know, she she did. But again yeah. it was uh, more of me to kind of tell it to her. It's like my story which I want to deliberately inform her. Okay. So uh, we were kind of dating at that point in time and my family were also realizing, okay, there's something cooking between both of them. Mm. and. Uh, they were they were kind of side tracking or kind of talking with each other uh, yeah, without yeah. telling it to us, and uh, this happened. And then they said like you know okay what's your what's your point? Will you will you what what are you taking this relationship forward? And uh, that's the time I realized uh, you know I proposed her. She proposed me. And once uh, this proposal was done, it, there was a guilt which was there. Okay, she might not know who I am. Yeah, she correct. might not know that I'm a bisexual person. And uh, if it's going for marriage, and if I'm not telling it to her yeah, right over yeah, there. Yeah. That is something that that is something which I'll regret my entire life. Yeah, correct. and uh, and for how long can you hide that? As indeed, well? drag is something. Okay, it's visible. Yeah, I don't have to explain to her. Yeah, but correct. what if I, what I'm feeling inside as yeah, a human exactly. being? That was really important. Yeah. So I went to her and I, at late night, two o'clock. This thought was bothering. I asked a couple of friends, "What should I do?" Uh, and they said, "Like you know, don't tell, because if you tell, uh, they might be uh, you might not be with this partner." I love her. Yeah, you know, I was instantly you know kind of developed this bond. Correct. And I didn't want to lose her. And then she's like, uh, I also know that if, I, if I'm not telling it to her, there's no there's no point of this relationship. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I made my mind, I, I sent a text message at 2 o'clock at late night telling that I'm a pansexual person. And then I left it. Okay. Um, and then uh, the next day morning, she sends me a, a Wikipedia link that, you know, uh, of pansexuality. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, is this you? Hmm. I said, yes, yes. Hmm. And she's like, okay. And then she's like, what did you cook for yourself? Okay. And then I was I was again confused. Like yeah. you know, uh, I told her, I gave her the information, and she understood it. Yeah. But she's not acknowledging it. And okay. uh, from that day onwards, I bombarded her with lot of queer content. Like uh, you know, some interview somebody is doing. I even shared uh, you know Shravan's uh, you know belly dance videos and yes. all that conversations yeah. which were being there. And at last, she's so fed up. She's like, you know, you don't have to give me all this information. I understand. I get it. Now move on from there. <laughs> So uh, that's when she, when I realized, okay, she's aware about me. Yeah. She has already done her research and then kind of, you know, kind of came. Taken a step forward. Yeah. After that, like after getting married, uh, you know, that was one coming out. And then it, there was other coming out where I have to tell the world that I'm married. Yeah. Because. How's uh, that? Yeah, because, you know, when you're dating someone, it's a total different huh. scene. But once when you're married, it's the whole new society that you have to face, your relatives hmm. and everyone. So how was that? So uh, the first thing was, uh, you know, I never made an effort to explain to my mother-in-law and father-in-law because that's not my thing. Yeah. I know I have told it to my father, you know, my parents, my partner, and hmm. she is the one who has to kind of go it and tell it forward. Uh, we haven't hidden anything from them. Like mm. we kept everything, every resource open. Yeah. Like they can kind of uh, know, you know, know kind of things which are being. So I haven't done much effort in explaining it to them. Okay. But it's being served. The food is served. They have to eat it. Yeah. So <laughs> that happened, and then when I came back to Hyderabad, and I started wanted to tell people, you mm. know, it, it was just the engagement time. Uh, I just told it to a couple of friends who are there, and I haven't told it to the world. And uh, I wanted to kind of post an engagement picture and say that you know, I'm getting married. Mm. 
So once I did that, uh, from the next day morning, I was getting hell lot of trolls, people calling me straight. They said like, you know, I'm, um, you know, uh, pseudo homosexual uh, or uh, I'm kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, somebody who is, uh, you know, like uh, hiding my uh, gayness or, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm gay, but I'm kind of marrying, uh, cheating her, yeah. a lavender marriage, all these kinds of words yeah. were kind of coming yeah. in. And uh, I couldn't tell them because, uh, you know, uh, it was a really kind of uncomfortable situation. Firstly. Um, you know, I used to get 10 or 15 messages from people from the community hmm. telling that, oh, you should stop doing drag because you are you are. Now you're getting person. married. Huh. Just because you're huh. getting married. And you, you are straight. You are visibly straight. Yeah. So you should stop doing drag. Yeah. You should not represent queer events. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of queer events where I was pushed out of. Uh, oh. And that everything happened. But uh, once I got married and once she started becoming a part of my uh, system, like, you know, once she started painting my head and... You know, uh, we, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a little thing for us, like uh, every day, every, every night or sometimes when we want to create content, she paints my face uh, more oh, beautifully sweet. than this. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, we, we used to put it on, on social media mm -hmm. and uh, once we started doing that, people started realizing, okay, it's not what we thought of. Yeah. This lady is standing with me. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough space. Yeah. And um, still there were a lot of DMs from straight people asking us for threesomes and all that kind of bullshit, which my even God. happened. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the queer community kind of stood back. Like okay. my friends who were there, they kind of stood back. And they said like, you know, uh, if you're doing it for one bisexual person, you're doing it for all the bisexual and pansexual yeah, community. Correct. And it also became helped me become an advocate of bi and yeah. pan uh, you know, sexualities uh, or representation. Yeah. So um, that's that, that, that thing kind of changed because she was standing next to me. And once she was there, she was, she was taking that space, people then realized, okay, he was not lying. He was, he was genuinely telling yeah, it. He yeah. was kind of genuinely putting it out. Yeah. So uh, that space or that power which she has provided me something which is, which is a huge... Uh, you know, support uh, in my entire you yeah. know, life, and yeah. uh, I still kind of cherish it uh, for. <laughs> no, for they that. say no. Like, if your family and if your partner is with you, hmm. if they are there to support you. You can fight the world. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. So that's what is the big thing. So I'm so glad that in all the situation, your parents and you know your wife, they stood by you through thick and thin, and you guys are here right <laughs> now. So that's wonderful. <laughs> So tell me, like, are you guys part of any, you know, um, activist uh, communities? Do you support uh, any communities where, uh, you know, you also get support, mm -hmm. like vice versa? Like, how does that work? So I basically, uh, you know, like when I started doing drag, so drag is one way of me going ahead and showing my activism. Yeah. Where I don't have to hold a placard, mm. I don't have to, you know, do something which is which is more uh, atrocious. I can just be myself, and that is all itself is threatening a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, with this, I'm trying to bring in uh, advocacy about LGBTQI plus community, like uh, going ahead and teaching uh, gender studies to children. Uh, mm. You know, they, I was working with a small NGO called Swetcha, where we go to JPSC schools, we go to the small small schools in and the urban city. And you have a podcast as well, right? Yeah, so um, Telugu podcast Telugu. because Telugu doesn't have a lot of queer content at one point in time. Okay. And I thought, like, let's let's bring that. Let's mm. let's ask a Telugu person to come and we'll talk in Telugu about gender and sexuality. Okay. I did that because I wanted to give content to my father. Oh, okay. who are Telugu speaking people okay. and they didn't uh, they were not connecting with my interviews okay. so um, that is uh, that was there and then I work with Mobara Foundation which is an NGO from hmm. Hyderabad uh, I work uh, with the Firefly community which is a woman led NGO oh, so um, I'm, I'm kind of parted I also started a you know a, a digital space called as drag Vanti. it's my e-daughter Okay. Uh, where um, it's, it brings all the drag queens from uh, all over India. Mm. It's, it's a portal where you can get everything and anything about drag. There's a directory of drag artists who are there all, all across India and uh, you can book them at any point in time. You can reach out to them. So it's a, it's a, oh, you know, Wikipedia it's a whole that. world out there. <laughs> wow, lovely. <laughs> Interesting. So Shravan, tell me about uh, asexuality. So basically asexuality means people who are not attracted to any gender or any uh, you know, sexually. Oh, okay. like people will attract it uh, romantically but not sexually. They, they, they don't want to be part of uh, sexual intercourse. Okay. Sometimes they'll be having very less interest uh, uh, having a sexual intercourse. Hmm. So I kind of uh, realize myself that I'm, I become, I uh, kind of uh, comes under this spectrum. How did you realize that? You know, because when you love someone, <laughs> you know, you want to take it a step forward. So... So uh, that happened. So when I I try to uh, experiencing or experimenting with multiple genders, yeah. so but I I somewhat I I started liking it. But uh, there is the, there is a point, right? Uh, so you realize you don't want to cross that line. Correct. So 
every time i meet a person like okay uh, apart from that i don't want to do anything okay. i feel so uncomfortable doing yeah. that so i'm like okay let's stop it here let's just okay let's keep a let's you would have had many breakups no then so honestly i've never been in any relationship as well are you so, serious okay yes, so i think this is a reason please if anyone is seeing <laughs> this video please yeah. contact me <laughs> yeah so that, that that's about me and i sometimes but what is like someone who has feelings for you so and i then? clearly tell them let's uh, Uh, let's let's be friends for, for some time. Yeah. Let's see what are the possibilities. Yeah. And uh, after that point, when I when we reach to that point, I'll tell them clearly. Okay, this is not going to happen, and this is what I am. So, so this is where you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. So I didn't know anything about if there was any existence, uh, you know, of asexuality. So thank you so much for briefing me on that. <laughs> So tell me Aniket how was the experience of you know styling like drag queens and styling sass The experience was amazing and uh, we had a lot of brainstorming behind the ideas hmm. so generally when uh, so it happened so we we How is it different from like styling you know like an actress or a model or like when you're styling me also to a drag queen Oh my god Styling a drag queen has a lot of drama. For, for instance, <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. drama is should be there. Yeah, and you know there are a lot of channels. You're also full of drama. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh God. <laughs> so uh, the the drama with Shastri was amazing because yeah. the the concept. So we started the. So we had two looks inspired by Rabindranath Tagore. Yeah. uh poetry uh, one character was chitrangada mm. uh, like you know we we wanted to represent like you know how why only women should be uh, be as brides why yeah. can't a man representation of bride yeah. yeah so it was a kind of a gift which he gave it to me before my marriage oh so, yeah <laughs> Yeah, it was my gift for him. Yeah, so as he said, no, why should boys have all the fun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, other presentation of uh, uh, Chitrangada was uh, like a very strong, fierce, yeah, tribal woman, hmm. like you know who who is here for fighting his for for her rights and everything. So that was a very different representation of the entire thing. We had we had a wonderful team hmm. uh, of. of the, who who are who are the part of this uh, process then uh, coming back to the recent shoot what we have done it was last year for navratri sorry hmm. so we had uh, the uh, three devis hmm. we had durga we have saraswati we had lakshmi hmm. so in that also we were, we were trying to represent why you know goddesses are like you know we should embrace gods as their own form hmm. but why can't you know a man can also be be like a lakshmi hmm. because when you when you talk about ardhanarishwar is like you know more like you know you have two spectrums of bodies hmm. Hmm. embodied you have a man you have and you have a same uh, you have a feminine quality you have a masculine quality hmm. then why 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 a uh, woman should always uh, always be there why hmm. can't a man have a representation hmm. of the goddesses so hmm. we have done hmm. i was very scared <laughs> it was a very <laughs> i thought it would be very controversial <laughs> shoot yeah but luckily nothing happened people hmm. did give a very positive shout out okay. and there were some there were there were some uh, point of uh, there were some people who were like you know were the judgmental people who are, hmm. who are, you know always want to judge yeah correct so that what, is in spite of whatever you do yeah You always, always get yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always get you always yeah, being judged yeah, yeah, yeah. always being judged the way I, the way i i the way i put up my work i'm i'm judged yeah many people from the industry asked me why are you doing this why are you spoiling your name why are you doing uh, why are you working with drag artists why are you doing this what is this is 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 the community helping you out in, in any which ways why are you putting this i said it is my it is it is my page it is my will and you are You are nobody to question me. Hmm. You want to unfollow me? Please do it right now. Yeah. I am not here for your approval or for for your Correct. validation. Yeah. I am here for for what my heart says. Yeah. And he's a he's a very dear friend of mine. So, and we have stood in all thick and thin for each other. Hmm. So why not? <laughs> thick and thin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> to be honest, uh, yeah. Uh, um, I think uh, the one best part of working with Aniket is hmm. like I don't. Ha- I just have to give him a concept. 
and that's where my role ends. Mm -hmm. Like even posing and everything, he is like kind of really bird's eye view. He wants it to be in his own vision, yeah. and it gives a different kind of a freedom altogether because. Uh, his his ideation of me uh, when I'm kind of putting in drag is completely different, yeah. and it brings a different kind of a beauty uh, yeah. when it comes to. He made me a bride, and I haven't looked like that beautiful at all in my life. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and I got a lot of proposals as well, which I can't. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uh, matrimony, <laughs> matrimony. <laughs> and after the while, when I got married, people started thinking me as I'm a Sima auntie, and uh, you know, <laughs> will will do such things for uh, you know other queer people as well. But yeah. uh, He's always given that freedom and okay. his vision point is really kind of, uh, you know, uh, up front and, and we are really wonderful uh, friends, like all, all the three people. We, yeah. Like uh, I call Aniket at 2 o'clock and we bitch about all the people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Bitch about me also. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You're, you're, you're exclusive. <laughs> You need to have such close friends yeah. that you can just pick up the phone and not see the time and just call them and just belt your heart out. I think we, you know, we should name this group as Golden Girls. Okay. <laughs> should or Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Great. So now, like, you know, I have seen, like, from Hollywood to Bollywood, you know, like a lot of stories based on people's sexualities. It's very openly coming out. So what's your view on that? Indeed, I think... Uh, you know, and even our Telugu cinema, <laughs> like you know, like I was shocked, like I saw a couple of short stories and on YouTube and on our OTT platforms, you know, now people are slowly, slowly coming out of their own body and they were trying to, you know, um, not hide their sexuality. So I feel that is very important. So yeah, sorry, tell me about So that. I think uh, uh, the, the, the change of yeah. vision, uh, you know, like uh, anything which, which you are kind of telling authentically with an art mm. is always something which reaches out to the public. And the reason why it's really important, it's, it's, it's kind of mandatory to represent uh, queer as well as uh, LGBTQI plus people is because uh, they are the majority and part of your audience. And uh, unless and until the hero is relatable to the audience or the heroine is relatable to the audience or certain characters relatable to the audience, the movie would not go forward. Yeah. So I think uh, the stories are coming up and they are successfully hit. They are not something which is like an art film uh, which is being sitting on the yeah, backyard. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I was growing up, I I was really kind of mesmerized with the with, with the queer uh, you know anthology which uh, Rituparna Ghosh has put in Bengali mm -hmm. film, where uh, the idea of uh, you know he coming up and dressing up in trans feminine uh, you know posters and kind of creating the canvas that was a mal broke situation. I even remember when Fire came out. <laughs> there was so much of controversy <laughs> around that movie. Yeah. And um, I think that see like let's see the demography of that when when these movies came out where still it was a hush hush. Post 377, it's, it's more direct, it's more on the face and people are buying it. They mm. want that kind of thing. Yeah. Like uh, even today if Netflix is uh, getting a hundred uh, you know, crores from uh, a sex education or any other kind of uh, yeah. shows because yeah. they have representation, yeah. they are yeah. catering to every damn audience who is seeing it. So um, it's, it's really wonderful when it comes to representation coming out in, in Bollywood, like we had some wonderful movies. Uh, however, there is a small, um, you know, thing which uh, I think is, is a change which we need to have. Like let's ask the, the queer people to tell queer, queer stories, queer people to do the queer stories because that's what exactly happens is like, yeah. uh, I'll give you a little example. Beyonce can, uh, you know, play a disabled person, but disabled person can't play Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, and similarly, when it comes to the idea of, uh, you know, a queer person going ahead and doing uh, a queer role, it brings the authenticity. They will not Correct. exaggerate a certain yeah, aspect. Yeah. And they will be just there in, in their own skin. It will be so real. Real. And it's yeah. normalized. Yeah. When, uh, you know, when somebody else does that, it, it is either exaggerated, which is giving a caricaturish view point right. on that particular yeah, I get people. you. Okay. So, um, that is a change which needs to be led, led forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of people who are actually contributing yeah. within the film industry. Like, especially for Telugu, there was one particular instance where I have seen a wonderful movie kind of uh, come across. It was, a, it was a very thin line how the ideation of this particular director uh, to ensure that uh, he's giving the message but he's also ensuring uh, it's he's not hitting somebody hard yeah. or he's not demoralizing a yeah, certain community yeah, yeah. so care of kanchita palam this is there is this small uh, you know scene where uh, the the people will kind of come ahead and call a person that you are gay because you are hitting on people mm. 
he didn't use any word which was regular in public yeah. he could have used use some kind of a bad word which has already been there yeah. but he chose a word which was really the, the director venkatesh maha chose a word which was really uncommon or uncanny people can't pronounce it properly yeah. so when he put that and when he was trying to articulate this particular story and showed that you know people using this word are also bad okay and when he did that purposefully he has negated all the negative uh, usage of this particular okay. word which became homogenous which mm. became kind of a normal situation for mm. people and even uh, you know now directors are deliberately hiring trans people to yeah. play trans characters yeah. and giving that space uh, to people and yeah. i think that is something which is wonderful which is the new change there are trans happening. bands as well like one of my music director friends he formed this whole band with all transgenders and they perform all over the world wonderful and they amazing indeed i i think that is what is required yeah. the, the the bodies telling their own stories yeah, exactly. uh, is what uh, the vision point of change Yeah, will happen yeah, yeah. and we are progressing uh, you yeah. know i know it's it's still baby steps but uh, we are definitely having a yeah. anchor point you guys are going to reach there <laughs> soon so soon okay lovely so as we are coming to uh, the end of the interview so any message that you want to put it across so i would say that you know uh, when love is something it's a universal language uh, love doesn't have to be confined at in one box you can love anybody in this world and you know and let love and live love and you know love wins yeah uh, love is love that's more important and that signifies my brand as well you know that that you know when you come to flirt diamonds or or you get styled by flirt fits or design get designed by flirt fits is all about love and compassion yeah. whether you come from any race any sexuality whether it's a transgender or trans man or a pansexual or a drag queen <laughs> comes to or, or like a belly dancer comes to my store or my place i would be obliged and uh, hi- and highly honored lovely so shravan as i said so whenever you are in dilemma about to decide so just uh, think of why should boys or girls have all the fun huh, so okay. just go with the flow that okay. that's what i can tell <laughs> Over to you, sassy. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, for me, I think uh, with the changing times and with with the changing aspects of it, uh, one thing is like never assume and always ask questions. Like uh, ask question for yourself, ask mm. question for the society. Um, you know, uh, assumptions are you know just take off. Like uh, everybody can wear a red, red lipstick or purple, yeah. and <laughs> every can be sassy and every you know everybody every damn person on everyone earth should just have their own identity mm-hmm. and style. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel. And I yeah. think everybody is a drag queen. It's just that we Correct. have that inner channel. A lot of people inter- shy away from it. Mm. Yeah, it takes them a lot of time to come out of their own shell and mm-hmm. be out there. And it's just like we just need that boost to come out. Correct. Uh, you know and. Uh, just be yourself because yeah. rest everybody is taken yeah <laughs> so for me also like you know for me i had to deal so much with my complexion you know me being on the darker side there used to be so many people putting me down and then they were like oh reds and maroons are only for fair skin so you know like i feel in our own individuality we have our own fights Indeed. that you know we just need to go out there and stand for ourselves and say hey you this is mm. me if you want to you know hang out with me otherwise like the door is that side the <laughs> when you stand up yeah. when, when anybody kind of stands up you become the anchor point for people who are watching exactly who behind you they are like oh if that person could do it why can't i do it yeah, yeah. exactly the thing happened with me also like when i was styling a drag queen and uh, when i put up my po- when i put up the pictures on my brand instagram you know many people who want to associate many like many brands or many companies or many designers who wanted to associate with me to collaborate with me they were like you know they, they were taking a step back because oh my god he's doing a, he's doing such things and you know, drag queens and uh, all that thing so i believe like you know you know fashion is uh, firstly clothes are gender fluid okay. clothes are to, clothes are genderless i can uh, today i'm wearing a shrug i can also wear a uh, a skirt and walk in and uh, that i uh, see men like fully manicured nails and yeah. i could see yours <laughs> as well yeah like and i see a lot of them like even in india and outside india Indeed. you know yeah. and they like so well dressed with more perfectly uh, you know like apt makeup and i feel I, it's just I, beautiful i believe that, you know we have to get rid of the taboo that you know taking care of us of one's oneself is very important you know we are, We are living in this world where you know we have to take care of ourselves. Get get yourself. Up, As up we and say, like your... if you're too old, you can't do makeup. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So I I feel just, there is no just, age or anything. Just, yeah. 
if you're getting a pedicure or manicure oh my god are, are you a girl who is getting a pedicure or manicure or done yeah yeah there is something yeah. I, that there is something you get often you know but i'm a man i have, i have two feet it's just you just keeping hands. yourself clean yeah. that's yeah. about hygiene really, <laughs> yeah. really important yeah and it's the same as when i when i've got so many brands i told i told the i told the brand see my work is out there this is my work hmm. i will not stop collaborating with drag queens i want to work my brand is uh, at lgbtq inclusive brand i stand up for the lgbtq people because as as a brand i don't discriminate with anybody yeah why, why, whom should i why should i discriminate correct the god had the god did not discriminate why should i discriminate yeah okay i told them if you want to give me work give me work if you don't want to give me work don't give me work yeah that's fine i'm not dying to work with you correct i, I so i have always worked on my own uh, terms and conditions mm-hmm. i've never bowed bow down to anybody else's terms and conditions when it comes to my work okay because uh, working with shastri is a very personal connect mm-hmm. it is a very uh, for me it's a it's more like tom tom and jerry working together okay <laughs> thank god i'm not the jerry okay <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm the tom then <laughs> Someone has to be the Tom and someone has to be the Jerry. <laughs> so you guys. So I. So it, it, we had an amazing uh, shoot, and whenever we, uh, whenever we put up some content, hmm. the media did notice that content. Hmm. It, it went to the commercial media, went to the Indian media, went to, and we 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 were also featured in Broadway International. Our work got featured, okay. and uh, all thanks to Shastri yeah. and uh, the entire team who worked worked on that. Okay. And I take pride to thank myself as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Great, great. <laughs> So thank you so much guys for watching the entire video and wishing all the LGBT community and everyone a very happy Pride month and once again take good care of yourself and lots of love. 